Okay, so let's talk about the radius of gyration uh, from the from the very simple point of view, uh, trying to um, uh, estimate the size of the polymer chain. So radius of gyration can be shown as a picture on on the left here. So this dot here is essentially a center of mass. So the CM is uh, what I want to put it in. So this is the center of mass. And then you have these different monomer units. Any distance from the monomer unit, you can you consider it to be a mass unit. And then you summarize it. And what will be the average distance uh, from the center of mass? And then people uh, estimate, well, that will be about like this. And then that will be something that we can call that, that distance as a radius of gyration. So in a, in a simple way, polymer coils uh, looks like this, and they kind of estimate this one to be a, some kind of a spherical shape, and that gives a size parameter called radius of gyration as a measure of polymer size. The, so this is an idea about the radius of gyration. And uh, there is another one called hydrodynamic radius, and this is shown on the right. And in the field of flow, and also polymer chain can be sh shown as some kind of spheres. Uh, and then for from the perspective of hydrodynamic, which means moving in a fluid, what will be the size of the polymer chain that behaves like a dense sphere, which we call the usually following the Stokes law. And this is something that we're going to talk about when we talk about uh, the intrinsic viscosity and the dynamic light scattering section in our uh, lectures later in the series. Okay, so let's let's start with something that uh, make make a guess here. So this is something that is simple as that. We show this picture shown up here. And then, okay, so I guess so this is sort of the center of mass. Will be a, this is like a radius of gyration. That's a RG, and what will be that? And that certainly depends on the number of bonds. And the um, practical question is, if you have a polystyrene with a 10,000 gram per mole, or polyethylene, and what, what will be the one? Depending on the polystyrene polyethylene, you have a different size, but there's a very, uh, it's, it's, an, it's not so different. Okay, it's always within the same order of magnitude, and uh, you make you can make a guess on on this question later on here. Okay, so let's see uh, where do we start. I think the size argument I, I have provided this argument here, saying well, our starting point is as simple: carbon carbon bond. What will be the length of this? And this is what we call the length. Uh, L, right? So this is a, in the previous, and then we're going to use this notation later on, but that will be the length is 1.54 angstroms, okay, as common in the poly, uh, polymers. And then specifically, uh, and the polymer is a essential collection of just many, many carbon bonds, which is shown up in the schematic diagram. And then as, as we calculated before. Okay, let's, let's talk about the polyethylene. So this is a CH2, CH2. As you can remember, this is a degree of polymerization. And then I want to know how many number, of, what is a N is number of bonds, right? If I know the number of bonds, I can, I can calculate something, what is called the contour length and the projection length shown up here in the following. So the number of bonds is, if you look at my previous lectures, it is, a, in this particular case, is two times degree of polymerization. Two times degree of polymerization, which is essentially molecular weight. And as you remember, the m naught, which is a molecular weight of repeating unit, was 28. So that's a 28. So if you do that everything, that will be about 700 uh, 720 bonds, okay, about it, okay? So you have that many. So then the, the, using that as a clue, and then L, which is the length of the bond is 1.5, uh, let's say 1.5 angstroms, and just approximate that, and using that information, we can kind of estimate something that 
it just make a simple simple guess. So let's let's uh, let me choose a color of something looks like this. Okay. So contour lengths. Okay. So the, what is called the contour lengths is defined is this is a carbon carbon bond. What will be the lengths along its chain contour? Right. It can be as simple as for you to think about. Oh, wait a minute. I remember uh, that this is 1.5 angstrom, right? This is all carbon and carbon, so so the, therefore contour length is very easy to estimate, which is just nothing but uh, n times l, because right? uh, you just measure the size along its chain contour so that will be uh, 720 times 1.5 angstrom approximately I find that that's about 1100 angstrom and I would like to use use a number that is that is let's say okay that's about 110 nanometer that's actually pretty good, pretty big number, pretty large numbers. And if you look at the projection length, which is uh, shown up here, I can see that the red line is uh, what they call the projection length. You can get the exact formula based on the bond angle, but I can easily simply say that, okay, projected length from the 1.5 angstrom, that's about close to say one angstrom. So that's about a one angstrom, and so therefore the my uh, projection length is is about that's a sort of the realistic because it's not realistic measure the chain along its chain contour. So this is more uh, closer to the realistic, and that's the uh, I guess uh, you got 720 bonds, and each one has a projection length about one angstrom that's about uh, now about 70 720 angstroms that's a 72 nanometer so i guess it got smaller as you can see here uh, but let's just think about it uh, the size of the polymer chain is being if this start to ball up and they start to have this chain and then this is the radius of the region there are many equations uh, but this is i'm just giving you the equation right away and we can get to the how this exact equation can come about the radius duration is you know depending on the many polymers is they are different but this is a good equation to remember there's not many equations that I wanted to remember, but this is a one of the good rule of thumb equation that you can you can remember. That's the radius of gyration is about 0.3 to the molecular weight, and the unit is an angstrom. So in this case, is m is 10,000, which is 10 to the fourth. So the radius of gyration is now uh, uh, 30 angstrom, which is 3 nanometers. And that's a very small, and and that idea is actually coming because the polymer chains are essentially doing a random walk. When these chains are kind of ball up, doing the random walk with a characteristic length, and then their sizes, uh, the radius is really uh, in the neighborhood about 30, uh, 3 nanometers. If you increase the molecular weight, uh, there will be something higher. So uh, if, I, if I give you another give you another thought, if your molecular weight is about a million, your radius of gyration is now uh, 30 nanometers. Right? That's a uh, you know, mi million gram per mole. Uh, molecular weight is pretty large and the size is still quite small, is invisible to the human eyes.
uh, we were optical microscopy. Okay, so let me give you a final thought about this, the, the, the size. And uh, actually, one final thought could be, wait a minute, we know polymer usually have a density, and that density is, I guess, a one gram for one cubic centimeter. So this gives a kind of nice clue that uh, I know my mass, and I know my volume, and the volume can be contains an information about some size. And if I say that my volume is a uh, sort of the sphere, then I can I can give that uh, relationship. So let's let's give this uh, argument about uh, measuring size r from here. Okay. So uh, my example is I'm going to use one million gram per mole. So one million gram per mole is your polymer chain weighs one million gram when you have a one Avogadro's numbers of polymer chain. So uh, from the density, what that means is it polymer weighs one gram, that's a mass, for the volume of one cubic centimeter. But if you think about it, my polymer has a 1 million gram per mole Avogadro's number, which is a 6 to the 23. That's a mass of polymer chain, right? Polymer chain link. Polymer. And I guess I'm, I'm using the volume, which is a... Uh, this will be x cubic centimeter. So that will be a volume. And so I, I can calculate this, uh, the, the volume for molecular weight to the 10 to the 6 gram per mole based on the density is uh, uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 18 cubic centimeter, and that will be 4 pi r cube to the 3, right? So from this simple argument, I can calculate, okay, r for based on the density here, pictures, okay, if, if I just, like a packing these polymers and everything is just Occupy its own volume, and that will be seven nanometers. So that's an interesting perspective. Do you do you recall this, right? And versus that. So what's what's that really means? What's that really means here is, if I have a, a radius of gyration based on the random walk which is uh, proven to be uh, correct in various experimental verification. For polymers, that is size is, is let's say, uh, what was it, 30 nanometer, okay? But the R, based on the density argument, which is assumed here is, it, it's almost like a, uh, you're having this excluded one. So each one is occupying its own small thing. So the polymer chains are having its own volume and the mass is contributing. So everything is, will be the same uh, and there will be a no penetration. It will be more excluded volume. So it's just simply measuring the uh, mass versus volume argument means there is no overlap, no physical size, you just kind of compartment, you kind of divide it up, and then knowing the mass versus volume ratio, and then you can calculate the size from there. And that one, I calculate to be seven nanometers. So what that means in a pictorial way, if this is a polymer chain, right, and that's a radius of gyration of, let's say, 30, and the picture of this uh, seven nanometer is about 
this much. Right? So this is a sort of the not not a correct view. The the shown what is shown up here is uh, correct. But what, what this really means is uh, if I have a density based argument, this is more like they are not interpenetrating. You are just kind of stacking up of those chains and that will be the size of the polymer chain. But in reality, polymer chains are more like this. You have a polymer chain of 30 nanometers and there's another polymer chain which is a kind of 30 nanometers in radius of gyration, another polymer chain. Right? So they are essentially there's a very much a lot of overlap. I just here I draw the four polymer chain here. So this is a quite a different perspective. So let me let me delete this one. So this is a sort of the exclusive volume, and this is more like a realistic case on that. So this is this case is more real. There's a lot of overlap. And, and then this is where, and where the, this one is more like a not correct view. So overlap and interaction. In uh, when you have a high, sufficient high enough molecular weight, they call entanglement of polymer chain. Chains in milk. Okay, so this is a, a little snapshot about the overview, starting from the carbon-carbon bond lengths to the contour lengths, projection lengths, finally radius of gyration, and then comparison with the sort of density-based argument of a certain excluded volume size. And then we can see that that gives actually good physical insight that polymer chains are quite up. Uh, heavily interacting each other, there's a lot of overlap in their volumes. Thank you.